joining me and the Electric Magnetic Show. And this show is all about forces, but mainly two forces, an electric force and a magnetic force. And these forces allow us to push and pull. Now, we grow up in, in a, an environment where we're surrounded by three invisible forces. And we're all used to the one that pulls everything down. What do we call that force? Yep, it's gravity. And I'm gonna use a pushing force here. And that's going to allow me to balance the pulling force of gravity by a pushing force of the air. And it's not going up and it's not going down, it's kind of wobbling a bit there. But what we have are two forces in action. Right, here's my world. If I let it go, it's going to fall down. But if I place it on here carefully, ta -da! I can get it to float. And just so that you see that there's no special tricks there, ta -da! I've got a pushing force up and I've got my weight force down. So what is it that's pushing this up? What is holding this in place? Because I'm not using air. And I've got another one here, look at this. So we've got a pushing force there. But if I switch this weird device on, ta -da! I've got a pulling force. And that pulling force allows me to pull to the center, but if I let this go, then it pushes. So I've got a pulling force and then a pushing force, a pulling force and a pushing force. This machine here is called a Van de Graaff machine. This is a mini Van de Graaff machine. When I press this button, I've got batteries in here and it's going to make a rubber band move over two plastic rollers. So I'm going to use, well, let's see, let's see if we can use this air to push this up. Oh, whoa. and then gravity brings it down and it's floating. I've got a pushing force upwards and I've got that gravity force pulling it down. Now, forces allow me to do six things. We call them force actions. They allow me to get, first of all, something to start moving. What's the opposite to start moving? Correct, stop moving, well done. I can get something to speed up, accelerate, go faster and faster. What's the opposite to speed up? Yep, slow down, decelerate. But I can also get it to change direction and change shape. So as we go through this show, I'm going to be using electric forces and magnetic forces for us to investigate those six force actions. Now, these are tin foils. I had to eat a lot of pies for this. And when I put them on the Van de Graaff machine, uh, we're going to have uh, charges build up on here. So in my next set, I'm going to introduce you to static electricity. The first time I think I experienced static electricity was when I was using a balloon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a balloon pump. I'm going to use my pulling and pushing forces. When I do that, I'm going to push air into the balloon and we're going to get the balloon to change shape, one of my force actions. Uh, I'm gonna speed this up, so here we go. Ta -da! I'm gonna tie this off. In science, we give lots of different names to pulls and pushes, depending on what gives them. So basically, if it's gravity, it's gonna be a gravitational pull. We don't have any pushes. If it's magnetism, then we can get pushes and pulls. We're gonna look at magnets in a minute. But when we're dealing with electricity, just like magnets, we've got two different 
type, so to speak. With magnets, we get north and south poles, and with electricity, we get positive and negative charges. Now, at the moment, this balloon has equal numbers of positives and negatives. It's not charged. So I can use another force. So what I want you all to do is I want you to put your hands together, okay? And for five seconds, we're gonna rub them really fast. On your marks, get so go. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. Even just for five seconds, did you start to feel that burn? And, um, and we call that force between two solids in contact. What do we call it? Exactly, it's friction. And, and if my hands were dirty, I could steal dirt particles from one hand to another. If I fall off my bike, the road could steal the skin from my arm due to this frictional force. And using the balloon, I can rub it against my hair. And, da da da, look at this. And the more I pull it away, ah, oh, my hair goes down. So the further these charges are away, the weaker the force. But as we get closer and closer, then those forces become stronger. And uh, so, oh, let's do that again. This is the part of my balloon that was charged and it's being pulled in. So this is metallic and it's got electrons that are able to freely move and those electrons are being pulled towards my balloon. And when they touch, then they're going to move across and we're going to end up with them being oppositely charged. And again, I can use this static force to get something to start moving, stop moving, whoop, speed up, slow down and change direction. Gravity pulls it down and that static force is pushing it up and at the moment those two forces are balanced now this toy here as i said it's called a fun fly stick or a wanderama we can charge it up and it's going to give us whoop it's going to whoop, it's going to give us pushing forces whoop, i hit my nose there uh, and the machine that you might see in school is this one here it's called a van der graaff machine and I basically want to find out how big is the push. So we've got quite heavy tins there. And I'm going to switch this on and we're going to see what happens to these tins. Now, when we do this, we can get big charges building up. So I'm going to earth it. I'm going to touch it with this so no sparks can jump on me. And then once it's switched on, I can step back and then I can take this away. And then all of the charges here just like they did with that foil, are going to go onto the foils and they will then have the same charge. Let's find out when something has the same charge, what happens. Ready? Oh. Oh. Switch that off. That happens so many times on days when it is wet so i'm going to need to get another prop to explain to you why and here is my prop this is supposed to represent a water molecule an oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms and all of our atoms have got positive and negative charges within them so the positives are in the nucleus and they're surrounded by electrons and it's the electrons that we can get to move and uh, the electrons that should be with the hydrogen actually like to spend a lot more time with the oxygen. So water is polarized. We've got the positive here, negative there. And in the room, there's a lot of water. And if this was being charged with lots of electrons, then as the water goes past, the hydrogen steal the electrons. If I had lost electrons here and this was positively charged, then the water would come along and give me its electrons and then also take away the charge. So what you'll find is a lot of experiments will have a hairdryer there. And the hairdryer is going to heat up the, the air and it's going to make hopefully the water evaporate, get the droplets to, to disappear. So I'm going to switch this on and I'm going to have it run in for 20 seconds, speed it up 
and then we'll come back and see what happens. I'm gonna take these off first so that they don't blow all over the place. And let's start counting. 20. Now, are we getting any, sp oh, did you hear that? We are now getting some sparks. So I'm going to get that to touch. I'm going to put these on. We ready? I'm so excited! Three, two, one. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, the lighter ones, they flew easily. These ones are a bit heavier, so we're going to need to get more charges building up. Oh, there we go. Da, 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 da. machine to work though I'm having to use current electricity so we're going to be talking about current electricity in a minute but I want to now move on and focus more on magnets our earth is the biggest magnet that we will ever come across we've got the North Pole and the South Pole and for this to push against the South Pole, then this has to also be a South Pole. Just like charges, positive charges are going to push away from each other, negative charges will push, but positive and negative pull together. With magnets, I'm going to have North Pole push against North Pole and South Pole will push against South Pole. And to make things easier for us, we color magnets uh, so this is going to be the North Pole, it's red, and normally you'll find the South Pole is going to be blue. And we do exactly the same with electricity, we colour our wires. Uh, red basically means positive, black is going to be negative. And uh, if I wanted to find my way around the countryside without using my phone, I can use, what are these things called? Exactly, a compass. And uh, at the moment, North is that way that's where north is now we can't see a gravitational field we can't see a magnetic field or an electric field but what we can do is we can put objects inside those fields and some of those objects align themselves up and for magnets if it's made of iron cobalt or nickel we can then use those magnets to pull them and they line up within that magnetic field. So what I've got here then are paper clips and those paper clips are lining themselves up within the magnetic field. I've come a little bit closer so that you can see this. The field is strongest by the poles and uh, those field lines are going between those, those two poles there. We can use magnets to do magic. Abra Kadabra. Nice, isn't it? And here I have a magnet. There I have a magnet. And for them to pull, for it to pull my flower out, they have to be opposite. So one of them is going to be a North Pole and one of them is going to be a South Pole. This is my North Pole. That means that this magnet is a South Pole and that one there is a North Pole. If I put it there, then it just pushes it away. It won't allow me to pull it. That was good. Let me now show you another magnet. Here we go. And there's lots of games that we can play where we can go fishing. And uh, so I'm going to put that there. Perfect. And I've caught myself Squirt. And Squirt is going to go looking for Nemo. And, and for him to move, there has to be a push or a pull. Now, lots of builders have torches, but inside the torches, they have a telescopic wand, which has a magnet at the end. And this magnet is, it's a south pole. It's pushing against that one there, but it pulls there. So I can now find out which end of this horseshoe magnet is north and south? The end here then is a south pole. And if I go 
to the horseshoe magnet end by the head of squirt, I get it to pull towards my magnet. So that is a North Pole. And the other end, I get it to push away. So using pushes and pulls, I can get squirt to start moving, to speed up, slow down, stop moving, and change direction. The only thing it's not doing is changing shape. Now, what I'm doing is I'm causing him to spin. And uh, so for us to do that, I need two forces. I need pushes and pulls. And uh, we're going to find out how we can get those pushes and pulls using electricity. Right. Before I do that though, I want to introduce you to the electric field. What I have here is a translucent balloon and I've put some polystyrene beads inside. When I use the pump, I'm going to push the air into the balloon and it's going to make the polystyrene beads move around really fast. Let's see what happens. Stop there. And what we're seeing is the beads have all got the same charge and they're pushing away. The balloon has the opposite charge and it's pulling together. So lots of scientists have studied these materials. So I want you to go and have a look at the Trebo Electric series and it will tell you which materials will give their electrons to others and which ones will take. Now, <clears throat> if I put my Van de Graaff machine back on again, watch the polystyrene beads. Then move in towards, and then they go back again. Towards, and they go back again. If we can get charged particles to move, we then get current electricity. These particles are not moving. In fact, if I rub it on my hair, charge up that spot, they stick. So we call this type of electricity static electricity. I'm going to put another rub here. Pull in my hair and I can get some of the beads to move over. And then I'm going to try to do a smiley face. I'm not sure how successful I'm going to be. Let's find out. Oh, not so smiley. <laughs> static electricity experiments. They're amazing. Look at this. This is now charged. If I give it a push, I have now got electricity. If I push it round a circuit, woo, using a battery, then that's called direct current. It goes from one end of the battery through all the wires and back into the battery and it just keeps going around like that. The electricity we use from the walls though is different. The electrons don't travel, they just vibrate backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards really really fast okay um if i give a gentle push then that's going to be a small current if i have a bigger push then that current is bigger and uh, when the current moves through our body it's going to heat up all the molecules it passes through and then we end up cooking basically or we say we are electrocuted so small batteries are they not going to kill us but the voltage from the walls will kill us 240 230 volts uh, that's going to have a really big push on the current electricity which would be very dangerous for us so we've got two different experiments here which allow us to visualize an electric field and uh, a magnetic field what i want to do now though is talk a little bit about electric current 
and then some of the amazing science that some of us scientists have found out about an electric current. For me to work this toy, I need a battery. And inside the battery, there's lots of energy. Let's switch it off. Now, not only was I hearing it singing, but I'm also getting it moving. How does that work? How are we able to build all of these wonderful toys and getting them to move and industrial equipment as well? And we have to go back in time. We have to go to the 1700s and the 1800s to find out about scientists called Ampere. So the flow of electricity that is, is named after Ampere, amps. And we have to find Alessandro Volta, who was one of the first people to make batteries. Now his battery wasn't small like this, it was massive. Um, and that battery would have had chemical energy. And once all that chemical energy had been used up, they would have had to produce more, build a new battery. And that's what we're doing with these ones here. It's just like my Lucas A. I can drink it all up. And for every 250 milliliters, there is 8.9 grams of sugar, loads and loads of calories in here. And once I finish that, I have to recycle the bottle. The same with this battery here. Once it's finished, it has to be recycled. Now, there was a scientist called Ørsted and he, Hans Christian Ørsted, and he had been building electrical circuits. So I've got an electrical circuit here. He would have had lots of wires and he would have had a battery. So inside this gadget here, I don't have one battery. I've actually got two batteries and, uh, and there are little electrodes on the outside. And, and what we're finding is that if we can get electricity to flow through a material, then we are going to get this gadget to light up. So I've used some sellotape and I've put the ends of my wires on there. And when I complete the circuit, so it kind of flashes and we get that sound. But what's really good about these uh, wonderful uh, cosmic balls is it allows me to find out other materials that conduct electricity. I can put it across there. Oh, metal conducts. And when I look at, when I look at this screwdriver, I've attached it to the metal part and to the plastic, nothing, go back to the metal part, it conducts. So we group materials as insulators and conductors. Insulators, they hold on really tightly to the electrons and they don't let them flow. Sometimes though, we can hit an insulator uh, such as quartz and get it to release its electrons or we can heat it up and uh, then the electrons will start to flow and then we've got other materials such as metals and carbon which will allow electrons to flow through them freely now what's lovely about this is it also lets me know that myself as a human being is a conductor of electricity so that's why we have to be very careful when we're using electricity so that we don't get an electric shock because the electricity will flow through my body. Ørsted had been playing with magnets. He had found out about the magnetic field. He'd found out and wanted to find out because people were writing about them in magazines and he was reading them. And uh, so he tied it away all of his magnets, but he'd left his compass on the table. He had it very, very close to the wires. And the wire was going over the compass. And when he switched on the circuit, it's passing through me there. When he switched on the circuit, instead of it pointing north, the needle pointed in towards the wire. Well, that was a bit weird. So what he then did was he changed the, the battery and had the battery pushing the electrons in the opposite direction. And then when he reconnected, he then found that the needle was pointing away from the wire. So he found out something quite fascinating, that whenever we have electricity flowing through a wire, that wire becomes a magnet. 
whenever we're talking about electricity and magnetism, uh, they should never really be separate subjects because we've found out that if I have electricity flowing, I have got a magnetic field. Taking this idea a little bit further was Michael Faraday, the king of electricity. And he found out that if he moved a magnet, so I've got a magnet there, quite a strong magnet, but if I move the magnet through a coil of wire, I can generate electricity. Moving electricity makes a magnet. Moving magnetism makes electricity. They go hand in hand, electromagnetism. And it's because of them finding all these things out that we were then able to build electromagnets. Now inside here is a big coil of wire. Because what Ersted found out was if we had just a simple wire, the magnetism was weak. But if he turned it into a coil, the more coils that he put in, the stronger the magnetic field became. And uh, what I've got now then is I've got a nine volt battery. When I switch this on, I can bring it down on top of my car. I can lift my car up. I can switch it off and then uh oh, it's got on the floor and then it drops. And these electromagnets are used as catches to hold doors open or in industry and junkyards to lift up old cars and move them into crushers. I want us to kind of go back though to one of the first experiments that I was looking at with magnets. And I, I can use that to lift squirt up. I can't drop squirt. So magnets are good at pulling things up. Electromagnets are better because they allow us to pull things up and then we can get rid of the magnetism and then we can drop them. Now remember, when we get two magnets together, I can get them to push or pull and I can get them to get something to spin. Now, if I can use electricity to make a magnet and have another magnet there, can I use it to get something to spin? So what I want to do is I want to introduce you here to Gary. And Michael Faraday, he was the one that allowed us to produce the very first electric motor. Now remember, I've got a magnet here, and around a magnet, I've got an invisible magnetic field. I've got a battery here, and I'm building a circuit. Electricity will flow through my battery, through my key, through my magnet. If I bring this down close to Gary, watch Gary. He gets pulled upwards because on his back I've got some iron and iron is pulled towards magnets. Now what I need to do from all the experiments that Ampere, Volta, Ursted, Faraday were doing, they all realized that we needed a complete circuit. When I connect the wire to the magnet, this becomes a weak magnet, that becomes a weak magnet, this becomes a weak magnet, that becomes a double magnet. And if I've got two magnets, I can get them to push. Whee! And I can get Gary to turn. At the moment, he's turning forwards. If I change the direction in which the electricity moves, let's see what effect that has on Gary. It makes Gary spin backwards. We have produced an electric motor an electric motor that will allow me to spin, first of all, in one direction, and secondly, in the opposite direction. And there are wonderful toys that use this phenomenon. So what I have here is my, my car, and, and if, if I move this, I get the wheels, and they can go left or right. If I do like this, it goes forwards, or it goes backwards. Whee! and I can get it to turn and woo, and it's gonna go all over the place. That is because we have a coil of wire with electricity flowing through it, making that a magnet. And inside it, there's another magnet and both of them push on each other, getting it to spin. Another toy that I have, and there's a little LED here. So I'm gonna cover that up, cover that diode up switch him on 
when I place my little dog on the table, nothing is going to work until light hits the diode. As soon as light hits the diode, uh -oh. his tail moves one way <laughs> and then the other way. Oh. <laughs> and we've got another motor in its mouth making it up, go up and down. Oh, and we've got... Oh. <laughs> Let's cover him up. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was good fun. So electric motors then allow us to get things to move. They also allow us to party. So we're going to finish on a party section. For me to make sound, I need to have something vibrate. But it's no good just moving backwards and forwards. It has to move more than 20 times a second or less than 20,000 times a second. And so when we talk about times per second, we say hertz. So if I'm going to hear anything, it has to be more than 20 hertz or less than 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. Other animals can hear above those ranges or below those ranges, but humans, that's our range. As we get older, that range gets smaller and smaller, and sometimes we need to, to use a hearing aid. Uh, basically then, if I get something to vibrate, I can hear sound. And what I've got here is a straw and... <laughs> When I blow down the straw, some of the air will leave, but some of it will move backwards and come back out the same. So if I keep blowing down, I'm going to have air bouncing up and down the straw. As it moves up and down the straw, the pressure inside here changes. So when I've got less air inside, the air outside closes this straw end. As the air comes back up, uh, pushes it open. As I continue blowing, then it closes and then it opens again. As I make the straw shorter, the time at which it bounces backwards and forwards becomes shorter too. And that affects the pitch. This is a little musical box. And when I turn the handle, the drum with little spikes moves around and those spikes make these prongs move. There's our little spikes and there's our prongs. The metal pieces here are different lengths. Different lengths will give me different pitches, but it's not very loud. So for me to get something to be louder, I need to get more substance to move. So inside speakers, we're going to have materials that will vibrate. And, uh, and what we're using then is the whole idea of having AC, electricity, making a magnet bounce backwards and forwards. When I'm talking on a telephone, there is a magnet attached to a diaphragm and that magnet moves backwards and forwards with the same pattern as my voice. As the magnet moves forwards, it's going to cause the electricity to move in one direction. As it comes back, the electricity goes in the opposite direction. So the patterns of my voice are copied by the electricity. The electricity is going to send signals. And then when I'm listening at this end, the electricity, because those coils become magnets, the magnet there is then made to move. That magnet moves at the same pattern. It causes the diaphragm to move and then I hear sound. And the bigger the diaphragm, then the louder the sound will be. So if I'm going to go to a big concert, I'm not going to want a small speaker. I'm going to want a really loud speaker. When I was growing up, I had a choice of two different types of records that I could buy, a 45 or a 33. And you might wonder, why have we got those uh, speeds? Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this lid down and I'm going to put my record there. 
I've got a little needle here. And when we look at the record, it's one groove and it's going to go round and round and round and round into the middle. And in the bottom of that groove, there are lots of little bumps, just like this here. And as the needle sits in the groove, the needle is going to bounce up and down. When the needle bounces up and down, it's going to make a magnet bounce up and down and it's going to then create an electrical pattern exactly the same as what we heard there. And just as we have with the telephone, that pattern is then going to speaker. We're going to have the electricity generated in a coil is going to make a magnet move up and down. It's going to move the diaphragm and we're going to hear that as sound. There's my needle. Here's my speaker and there's my wheel. This is a 33, so if I can get this to go around 33 times per minute, it's not very loud, it's just a very simple toy, but this toy here allows me to change the volume and um, if I put this on here now so this record was from 1976 I'm going to switch it on move it round I can change the volume oh that's a terrible song let's find another song Let's change and find another song. Hang on a minute. It's not very rock. Now, when I play this again, there's a little switch here that will allow me to change the speed. So it will go 45 times per minute rather than 33. Are you ready for this? In most everything I do. dance to that music so we're going to bring this back and we're going to finish with a song and I think all of us are feeling like this at the moment uh, this is a song by Queen you have just seen Scientific Sue that's me the electric magnetic show it is just a small taster of the fantastic world of electricity and magnetism, electromagnetism, that allows us to have all the wonderful gadgets that we use to create fun in our life. Are we ready for this? Hopefully some of you are going to sing along. I'll start with it slow first. per minute, now 45.